So far, we've been talking about the cru First Crusade and its path of destruction in the Jewish communities in Europe. Now we're going to speak in this video about the First Crusade in Eretz Israel and uh, some of the subsequent Crusades as well. So the Crusaders in the First Crusade reached uh, Jerusalem in June of the year 1099. So it took them about three years to get uh, from through Europe uh, and to get to Jerusalem. Uh, they captured the city by mid-July. Again, they captured it from the Muslims who had taken over several centuries earlier. Uh, the Jews in the Holy Land fought alongside, and this is historically really interesting, uh, it's something we spoke about when we were learning about Islam and Jewish relations a long time ago. Uh, the Jews of Eretz Israel fought alongside their Muslim neighbors against the invading Christians. Um, so again, pointing to the fact that uh, it's not necessary, not necessarily the case that Jews and Muslims can't get along just like today. Jews and Christians get along pretty well. Uh, hopefully one day we'll all be able to get along really well. Uh, and hopefully not just so that we can fight each other. Um, so things got pretty bad, uh, especially in the city of Jerusalem when the Jews and the Muslims are fighting against the invading Christians. Uh, a lot of Jews hid inside of shuls, which was, I guess, the safest place. Um, crusaders surrounded them and lit them on fire, which is what you can see here in this picture. Uh, here we have the, some shuls in uh, Yerushalayim, and they're being burned with Jews inside being burned alive. Uh, the whole city was basically laid to ruins, and uh, some of the captives, some of the Jewish captives, were sold into slavery. Some of those captives were later bought, uh, purchased, or redeemed, I should say, by Jewish communities um, in Italy. And um, I think some in Spain, um, but maybe not. Maybe just the Jewish communities of Italy. Um, the Jewish community in the north of Eretz Israel, in the Galilee, continued, um, but the other centers of Jewish life in Eretz Israel were unfortunately uh, pretty much ended at this point. Again, so we know from a long time before, in the year 70, uh, this happened where the Jews of Jerusalem were pretty much uh, not really around much anymore, uh, and then uh, moved more to the north. And again, once Jews had resettled in Jerusalem, once again, here at this point, they had to leave in the uh, in the Middle Ages. And, um, there are a bunch more crusades after this um, that, again, missions, uh, most of them military, some diplomatic missions of uh, Christians trying to take back control of the Holy Land uh, and the fact that even though in 1099 after the First Crusade they conquered it from the Muslims, the fact that there are other crusades uh, you can imagine, therefore, that it didn't. their Christian control of the Holy Land didn't last very long, and ultimately, none of the Crusades successfully uh, put the Holy Land in control, in Christian control, for, uh, for a long time, and the Muslims uh, kept winning it back. And uh, so, overall, the Crusades were not really a uh, totally successful mission from the perspective of the Christians, although some people uh, argue that it opened up the world uh, to Europe, it opened up the world of the East um, for trading and for uh, some spices and ideas that were going on there, although others argue that that was already going on even before the Crusades, and therefore the Crusades didn't really accomplish that much other than a lot of people dying and uh, a lot of murder of Jews and other non-Christians. Uh, um, so we're not going to go into detail about most of the other Crusades, uh, although we'll just talk about one that's really noteworthy, and that is the Third Crusade. The Third Crusade, uh, the part about the Third Crusade that's really noteworthy is the fact that it was uh, in, took place, the, or the part of it that took place in England. So the English Christians didn't really participate much in the first two Crusades, but the Third Crusade, led by King Richard the Lionhearted, uh, <coughs> in the... Uh, from, it was from 1189 to 1192, so we're talking about 100 years after the First Crusade. Um, so Richard the Lionhearted gets the Jews, uh, gets the, sorry, gets the Crusaders uh, interested in going on this crusade. Um, the majority of the Jews in town, cities like Lynn, Norwich, Stamford, uh, all in England, were killed in mass. Um, so just completely 
annihilated. Um, so here we have some maps of some of the later crusades. Here's a map of the Third Crusade here, like I said, 1189 to 1191. So Jews and up here is England. So they come down uh, even before they really get to, uh, they go far. They don't even get to, to, to Ashkenaz, really, to, Europe, to France and Germany. They're just wiping out the Jewish communities in England. Um, just one by one. In, uh, in the city of Lincoln, um, Jews were saved after some royal officials got involved. Um, uh, but the most noteworthy part about the Third Crusade was what happened in the town of York, or the city of York, I guess. Um, so in York, there were a number of nobles, of Christian nobles, who owed a lot of money to Jews. Um, and so they took the Crusades as an opportunity to get rid of their debt. Right? Pretty convenient. So uh, the Jews of York were attacked. A lot of Jews uh, ran to the castle keep. Um, basically, it was kind of like a fortress or a jail inside of a castle. Uh, and they tried to hide there uh, from the, you know, hoping that maybe the crusaders would pass and leave them uh, without killing them. Um, so the, the Jews who uh, were inside... The Jews who were not inside were killed immediately. The Jews who were inside the castle keep were stuck. Uh, they couldn't get out, and the crusaders wouldn't leave. So eventually, the people hiding inside uh, this, you know, try to figure out what to do, and um, some of the leaders inside ar argued and convinced people that better that we should all die in here rather than be forced, uh, be tortured, or forced to be converted um, by the crusaders on the outside, and we have no idea what they're going to do to us, better that we just kill ourselves and uh, go into uh, Olam Haba rather than be tortured and forced to convert by the crusaders. Um, so that's what happened, basically. They felt like there was no way out, so more than 150 Jews uh, killed themselves or were killed by the other Jews inside um, to save themselves from the torture and forced conversion. Uh, so, with all that, the deaths of the that the Jews had against the Christians, the Christian nobles were all erased, and they burned the the Crusaders burned the records of all the deaths, and they no longer owed the Jews any money. So that was the Third Crusade. So in this video, we spoke about the First Crusade and Eretz Israel and the destruction of the Jewish communities there and the Jews and Muslims who fought together against the Christians. And then we spoke about how there were many other Crusades that ultimately weren't very uh, successful. And the Third Crusade in particular, uh, what happened in England and specifically in York uh, with the Jews who killed themselves and were killed by the Crusaders and the deaths of the Jews against the against the Christian nobles that were erased.